So I've drawn at the top here um, a box uh, in yellow uh, with some circles in and these circles represent atoms and there are atoms in two different colors because I, I want to represent two different species of atoms so um, these, these red atoms here I'm going to denote as species A and these green atoms here I'm going to denote as species B um, now just based on visual inspection I think you can see that there are more atoms of species A on the left than there are of species A on the right and I've drawn this this kind of surface between the left and the right hand sides just to make it clear um, the, the dividing line between left and right um, but the, there's no wall here this is, an, uh, this is just to indicate that uh, th this kind of dividing line between left and right. So we have this difference in the number of atoms um, and we can describe this difference in, in a couple of different ways. Um, so let's say, I'll just change color here, so let's take uh, the density for example, so the density of um, species A on the left and we have also the, we can also measure the, the density of species A on the right. Now obviously we have more atoms of species A on the left than on the right so obviously the, the density of the um, atoms of species A on the left is greater than the density of the species A on the right. Um, typically you could measure density say in uh, kilograms per cubic meter um, and so I do and I just want to write just to because I'm going to define a couple of quantities here so I just want to make clear that this is then the, the density difference between the left and the right hand side of species A. Now it turns out it's actually it's often more convenient to work in terms of mass fraction so I'm going to let's, let's write mass fraction here And then, so we have, um, I'm going to denote mass fraction by W. So this mass fraction of A, of uh, species A on the left, and the mass fraction of species A on the right. Now, this mass fraction, let's put it over, let's put it over here. The mass fraction of, uh, of, of any species is uh, denoted by uh, the, the, or is, is defined by the density of the species over the uh, density of the system. Um, and I, I just want to kind of highlight two points about this system density. Uh, first of all, the system density is simply a sum of the constituent parts. So this is uh, the sum over all of the species densities, which in our case, looking at our system, is simply the density of species A plus the density of species B. And the other point that I want to highlight here is that um, this density here, the system density, is constant. It, it, it doesn't depend on position. So if I measure the system density somewhere here, in a small region here, or maybe a small region here, or maybe here or wherever, wherever I measure, take a small volume and measure this system density, this will always be the same. By contrast, the species density is not always the same. And we've seen this here, right? The species density for species A on the left is greater than the density for species A on the right. So this can vary with position, but this is constant wherever you measure it. And, and obviously you can take the whole system um, and, and calculate this, this density like this. So we can define then a mass fraction as the fraction of the density of, of species I over, over the total density. So that th this is one way of describing it in terms of uh, mass, uh, so we have density and mass fraction. 
But another way, um, in another method that we would like to, to have in our toolbox is to, de to be able to describe this in terms of a concentration as well. So I'm going to define another quantity called molar concentration. Molar concentration. And, oh yeah, I missed, I forgot this. So obviously um, the mass fraction is proportional to the, to the density of, of the species. So mass fraction on the left is greater than on the right. Now, in terms of molar concentration, um, I'm going to de denote this by C. So we have the, the molar concentration of A uh, on the left and the molar concentration of A on the right. And uh, th this is measured in moles, or actually quite commonly kilomoles per uh, cubic meter. And uh, well, I think, as, as you can see, moles are, are simply counting atoms, essentially. So we have more, more atoms per cubic meter on the left and on the right for species A, of course. We're, we're focusing on species A here. So the molar concentration of species A on the left is also greater than the molar concentration of species A on the right. And just like we define this mass fraction for the density, we can also define something called molar uh, molar fraction for uh, the molar concentration. So for molar fraction, we can uh, denote this by uh, the quantity x here. So the molar fraction of A on the left, well, I'll just write this out there, is, is going to be greater than the molar fraction of A on the right. And in a, in a similar fashion to this, we can define molar fraction of species I as being the, the ratio of the molar concentration of species I over the net uh, concentration of the system. And again, the total concentration, the, the total molar concentration, I should say, is, is th simply the sum over all the, the component uh, molar concentrations. So again, in our case, this would be Ca plus Cb. Um, and the, the sort of one thing that I want to highlight here is that the molar fraction and the mass fraction, these are both fractions, right? So the, the total, let's put this over here, the total uh, mass, the total molar fraction, or indeed we could do the same for the mass fraction, but the total molar fraction, if we sum all of the mass fractions together, uh, then this should come to one, right? Because it's just a fraction of the total. And we can do the same for the uh, mass fraction as well. This will also become one. Now, whether we describe this in terms of uh, density or mass fraction or molar concentration or molar fraction, however we describe this, the, what this difference gives rise to is a concentration gradient. And this concept of a concentration gradient is going to be central to a lot of what we're going to be doing from now on. Now, if I just jump down here, I want to highlight one final point, and that is that if we we have our two, two descriptions in terms of mass and in terms of uh, molar concentration. And we, if we know the, the mass of the species, then we can actually convert between the two. So if we take the, the mass of uh, species I and, so, and describe this in terms of kilograms per uh, kilomole, then um, you can uh, just you can switch between the two if you know so we take the concentration for example the concentration of species I which is obviously in in uh, kilomoles per uh, cubic meter this is then equal to uh, the let's just make sure I don't get this the wrong way around here we go the density so the the density of uh, species I uh, 
divided by the mass of species I. So this is obviously kilograms per cubic meter, and this mass, as I've just said, is kilograms per kilomole. So this provides, knowing the mass of the species provides a link uh, between these two different descriptions.